And it started to get us thinking. It started to get us thinking about how you can go sort of laterally on this to get other ways of getting people involved that might not be turned on by environmental stuff, but are into other things. So we got into this thing. This is a quiz, all right? This is the only quiz I've got this afternoon, so you better take part. Um, I want somebody at the back to start with, the back third, to shout out what they think that number represents. All at once, if you like, you know. <laughs> it's 12,568,987 as of yesterday. Plotting sheds. Sorry. Plotting sheds. Plotting sheds, I wish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move forward. This sort of middle band. <laughs> well, we'll leave those slackers at the back there. In the middle. Seeds planted, that's a good one. Acres or hectares? Acres or hectares of land. Let's try the front, front bunch. Bees. Bees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could be, could be. How the hell would you count all those bees? <laughs> that was Paige, by the way. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay. Woo. Okay, here we are. World of Warcraft, that's the number of people playing it as of yesterday online. Now, what the heck's that got to do with sustainability? Well, very, very interesting. We started talking to some geezers that were involved in making this game, and we said to them, well, how does this work, you know? And they said, oh, you download it on your computer, people play with it, they solve problems. Now remember what you've got on your pop-up farm thing. Energy, food, water, waste, building, well-being. Do, 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 do. So you seed in a game like this a challenge, like a climate challenge, like a little bit of World of Warcraft starts to move towards drought or famine, and the game players start to solve the problem. We take the metadata and we start to get real-time evidence of loads of different solutions which we can then apply into environments that are challenging. So what we're beginning to do is merge between the virtual and the real and utilize that amazing potential of human dispersed knowledge to start to experiment with real problems that are massive, massive challenges for the human race. So what we got into, in a sense, was mimicking nature, the mycelium of, of, of things like the internet. Open Source Ecology is a network of farmers, engineers, and supporters that for the last two years have been building the Global Village Construction Set, a set of the 40 different machines that it takes to create a small civilization with modern day comforts. The Global Village Construction Set is like a life-size Lego set in which motors, parts, and power units can interchange. Thus far, we have prototyped 8 of the 40 machines and have published all of the 3D designs, schematics, instructional videos, and budgets on our wiki. The cost of making or buying our machines are, on average, 8 times cheaper than buying from an industrial manufacturer. The compressed earth brick press is our first product release and is the world's first high-performance open source model. This machine allows one operator to load raw dirt right from the building site. The micro track walk behind tractor is a perfect solution. You'll get the idea, okay? It's, it's open source ecology. What they're doing at MIT is they've started to do it online as an open source methodology. So it's free to everybody, same as Pop Pop Farm. And what you begin to do is you network. You start to share the pattern. You start to experiment, you get something that's interesting as a solution, you pump it up into the system, loads of other people look at it, think that's interesting, they take it away, they play with themselves, they deviate from it, they find out new things, they feed it back into the system, the system gets more intelligent. It's not rocket science. It could be rocket science, but it isn't at the moment, all right? So what we're beginning to do in a sense is utilize the amazing connectivity of the internet and starting to think about what does that show us for education? What could that do for us for schools? What does that mean when we talk about classrooms and curricula? What does it mean about the whole idea of standards? You know, all that stuff suddenly stands a bit like history because this stuff's real-time solutions in real places. It's people taking this stuff. We're taking the brick project to Haiti. 
because what happened in Haiti was pretty disastrous in terms of aid activity. And Pop-Up Farm got asked to get involved in Port de Soleil. And so we're now designing a way in which we can use train some people to do the welding, go into Haiti, work with the people in Haiti to skill them up on the basic art welding techniques to be able to build the machine, the first version, build the brick machine and start to build buildings again from the rubble in situ. And at the end of that, they'll do something else with it. And you start to empower people and give them a sense of hope and possibility. It starts to get us into thinking differently about the future and what we, get, what we can do. So it isn't just a pessimistic direction. It's actually starting to bring, bring real capacity and resilience into people's lives.